Hello, welcome to a new episode of Talk Turkey post election, post summer episode. Hello, Nevshin. It's also, we can call it, I guess, a new season of Talk Turkey. The summer is over and we are ready to discuss the political developments in Turkey again. Exactly. We're ready to roll. Yeah. Um, where do you want to start? I mean, the opposition is dissolving. Do you want to, do you want to start yeah. from there? Or? I mean, I guess there's also a big gap between opposition voters and opposition parties and their expectations and how they behave. I mean, probably opposition voters have survived the initial shock. Uh, their post-election trauma is sort of under control, but they are still angry. And they are nowadays, I think, criticizing more the opposition side than the government as well. But do you think this anger will have any sort of consequence? Because in any normal country, I mean, you lose the election, you go and someone new comes. But it's not happening or it's not happening that automatically in Turkey, as far as I understand. Yeah, opposition voters are furious and I think they are right to be furious. I mean, we did a couple of episodes after the elections, basically. And I mean, it was like a, it was an, sort of an unexpected loss for the opposition. And the opposition leaders could not handle it, basically. They couldn't face the public. They couldn't face their voters. They could not come up with meaningful explanations why this election was lost for a period. I mean, in the beginning of summer, they were really quiet. They were not saying anything. So the the the, the most of the developments are happening within CHP, the main opposition party in Turkey, because according to the Turkish law, every two years, political parties have to have their congresses, right? But two years ago, there was this pandemic and this and that, and then there were, there were the elections. So the congress that had to take place was postponed. So this is going to be the first congress that the chp is going to hold after like four years or something something like that you know and it's going to be held after this huge basically election loss i mean right after the election the leader of the opposition party kemal kulishtaroğlu as we all know he ran for the presidency and he he lost like but he he lost and there there is like a hundred percent inflation in turkey and he lost under these circumstances so people are furious He lost and after losing the elections, he could not come up with like a meaningful explanation or something. He gave a couple of interviews. In those interviews, I mean, he actually, he kind of, he accused um, his party, his party branches. He accused them of not working enough. And then he accused voters, like in one of the interviews that he's given, he said, well, especially in rural areas, they're only watching state television, so they don't know. That's why they voted for the for the government, you know, his explanations were something like that. And this is making opposition voters even more and more furious. I mean, I'm going to come to CHP in a little while. I mean, we can talk about that a little bit. I mean, CHP Congress, upcoming CHP Congress. But meanwhile, as the summer progressed, so the leaders of the opposition started pointing finger at each other. You know, it was a table of six. There were two main parties, one CHP, one E party, one center right, one center left. And there were smaller parties, smaller like is, smaller Islamist parties and whatnot. So smaller parties are getting on with their with their businesses because they are they have been most profitable from this table of six because these are really small parties. You know, you know, Dovo Tolu's parties or Baba John's party, they couldn't even get probably. I mean, they were they were in this basically opposition front, but they couldn't even get like 1%. But however, like this Deva party, see, they couldn't even get probably 1%, but they got like 15 MPs from CHP, 15 MPs. Also opposition voters are furious for that too. So smaller parties, they have their MPs in the parliament, they're happy, they're going on with their business, but the two main parties, CHP and any part, they're, they're pointing finger at each other. Meral Akşener, the head of E party, the center right party, she has become very vocal, and all the dirty laundry now among these political parties are spilling around. Meral Akşener accused Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu of making 
closed door deals just to seal his presidential candidacy with the smaller parties, doing dirty bargaining. Uh, Meral Akshanar claims he didn't care anything else but just becoming a candidate of the opposition. And Meral Akshanar claimed that they all knew that Kılıçdaroğlu, he did not have a good chance of being elected, but he ignored that just for political bargaining and whatnot. She claims uh, big guns of CHP, they just want to hold on to their chairs, whatever they have. They're happy with that. They have some big city municipalities that's enough for them and they're not, they don't even care about the elections. So um, she started uh, voicing this sort of concerns and also within CHP now, we're going to come to that in, in a little bit probably, also in the CHP, people are accusing each other. But what we see now, we always said just before the election, remember what made Turkey different from other authoritarian states is that there's an institutionalized opposition, uh, united with one goal, one aim. They can sit around the table and decide about things. They are strong, a strong opposition in Turkey. But now the tables are turning. Actually, it looks rapidly. The opposition is losing strength. Uh, losing unity, and I'm afraid if it goes like that, I mean, there are uh, local elections upcoming, not many of the voters of the opposition are going to turn out uh, to the ballot boxes, I suppose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think many people believe that the opposition, especially the main opposition part, CHP, should be really severely punished by the voters in order for real change to take place, because people are really disappointed. And the post-election episode, I underline one clear message. I think the area of if you don't want Erdogan, then you have to vote for me is really over in Turkey because people want change and people want to see some different people as well in the opposition. So they are disappointed, they expect change and they don't really want to see uh, just the cosmetic change. So probably you will also summarize what's going on CHP, but uh, people are also not expecting like major changes. That's the disappointing part. So that's why punishing the opposition parties in the municipal elections is one of the options. But of course, at what cost? And that's the key question we discussed. But maybe you can tell us a little bit more about uh, what's going on in CHP, whether we can really see uh, a real change. Can we see a real uh, change in terms of also the, the chair of CHP? Yeah, yeah. So the Congress is coming up. So this is the chair of CHP, Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu. The world has gotten to know him. But actually, there's an even more famous figure within CHP, uh, Istanbul Mayor Ekrem İmamoğlu. So he was a, he has been a significant figure because after 20 years, he won the elections against AK Party in Istanbul elections 2019. And we thought back then this was a turning point for Turkish politics because Istanbul is really, really important. There are 20 million people living in Istanbul. It's like a small model of Turkey, so to say. So basically, when Ekrem Mamol won the elections, everybody thought, OK, this is a start. The tide is turning. The, the government is set to lose, basically. And the, the initial step is Istanbul elections. That's what people thought, basically. Uh, so he became like a heroic figure. But obviously, the government kept attacking on him. The government keeps saying, well, he's not hardworking enough. He couldn't do anything for Istanbul, whatnot. Istanbul is dirty. Istanbul is not well looked after. He does not have a vision, this and that. So most of the TV channels are under the influence of the government in Turkey. And like Ekrem Mamoli is being attacked uh, on those TV channels like uh, day and night. So to keep that in mind. So however, well, I mean, after this loss uh, within the CHP, the discussions have started and in the Congress. So people... Well, some of some of the some of the members of the CHP they expect the leader of the CHP to change. Basically, I mean, people think Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu has to go because he is the architect of this table of six. He is the architect of this of this system, and he wanted to be the candidate, uh, and he lost. Basically, his model lost. His discourse have lost the election, and there's no there's no turning point. What what really pissed people off, also CHP members and CHP voters, that right before the elections. The discourse of the opposition was, well, this is the last election. If we lose this, our party is, you know, even going to get more authoritarian. We're going to say bye-bye to democracy. So this is a turning point. That's very important. That's very important. But right after the election, they started undermining this election. Like, well, okay, this is not the last time. This is not the first time we lost. It will not be the last time. Something like that. Mr. Kılıçdaroğlu, I mean, openly, he used a sentence like that, which 
basically made people furious. So some people within the CHP, they expect the leader of CHP to change. Is that going to happen? We're going to see. So the Congress is approaching. So openly, uh, we only uh, have three candidates. One is going to be Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu. I mean, it's kind of certain. Uh, the other is not going to be Ekrem İmamoğlu because he wants to run for Istanbul for one more term. But he is now in this change front within the CHP. We can say in Turkish, we call them değişimciler, the ones seeking change. Now we are seeing this front, some of the MPs, um, <clears throat> some of the chairs of some cities are uh, have been have joined this so-called movement within CHP. So it's going to be Özgür Özel. He declared he's going to run for the presidency of uh, CHP, the main opposition party. He is supported by Ekrem İmamoğlu. There are other people with him. So this is a little confusing. Why isn't Ekrem İmamoğlu running? Because he wants to run for Istanbul. And according to the law, you cannot be a mayor of one city and the chair of a party at the same time. So he's not running himself, but he's supporting Özgür Özel. But Özgür Özel is also an important figure within CHP. But the thing is, the thing with him is he's very close to Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu for the last 10 years. I mean, he had been an MP from Manisa, an Aegean, Aegean um, town uh, in, in Turkey. I think he was elected in 2011. And see, since 2011, he was always very, very close to Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu. And in many cases, he was his right hand, so to say. So he was, he was really close to Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu. So people accusing Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu of the failure of CHP. But then when Özgür Özel says, OK, I'm running for the change seekers, for the change front within CHP, people are saying, well, I mean, you were a part of Kemal my cultural governance so how, how come i mean you, how come can you seek change you are the system yourself so how is that going to work i mean people are questioning this and Özgür Özel is trying to explain himself whatnot there's one other candidate called, called Ersan Öymen so Öymen family is one of the like you know CHP families uh, what not, you know, Renan, he's a, he's a philosopher. He's more of the, more of a Kemalist side, but he's a philosopher. I did not prepare his picture. He's not that, I mean, he does not have uh, uh, much chance within CHP. So it's going to be between Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu and Özgür Özel. But it depends. I mean, if Kemal, I mean, it, it, it, could, go, it could go both ways. Now, the local elections are happening within, or primaries are happening within CHP in cities and towns and whatnot. So it could go both ways. You know, they're, they're electing delegates. And now, finally, delegates are going are gonna to elect the chair of CHP in November, basically. It could go both ways. It could be either Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu or Özgür Özel. But I think if Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu remains in his seat, I mean, it's going to be a little disastrous because voters are really furious. Uh, there is zero trust among him. You know what's happening. With, with what's happening after the election? I mean, if Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu remains, I expect a disastrous result for the opposition in the local elections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this will certainly have major consequences for the local elections. It's also, I think, important to understand the Mamal's decision. We need to understand the importance of these elections because, uh, especially running Turkey's major cities like Ankara and Istanbul. Uh, they, they have great advantages for the position. On the one hand, of course, they are symbolically important. It keeps alive the hopes of millions that democratic change can happen uh, one day. On the other hand, it's also financially important, of course. The cities, especially Istanbul, uh, they're bigger than many EU countries. Istanbul's population is larger than 20 of 27 EU member states. We should keep this in mind. We are also talking about very large budgets, tens of thousands of employees, many connected companies under the municipality and wide range of services. So uh, it is also probably even a better position. You're much more powerful than maybe a party chair because you can actually deliver services. You can change things and uh, you can also be more in touch probably with as well. So this is also the only way to show that you can actually manage things and provide good services uh so this is still a great opportunity for the position the fact that the opposition failed to make use of this opportunity in the presidential elections does not really change this fact because it is still very important and as you said the municipal elections are in six months and the current situation is not very promising for the opposition i mean electoral alliances will not be as easy as in the past but one fact is also very clear. I mean, we are talking about still a very polarized Turkey. Nothing has changed. I mean, 
still we are talking about around 50% pro-government, around 50% anti-government. So electoral alliances are still the only way to win, actually. So the government side is also likely to continue with this uh, strategy as well. They will have their own electoral alliance for the municipal elections. That's why a pragmatic approach may also prevail sooner or later as we get closer to the elections. Of course, it also depends on the results of the CHP's internal process as well. But maybe a comprehensive electoral alliance will not be possible, but we may see some level of cooperation and coordination, especially for big cities, because in a way, the opposition parties will need to act in a pragmatic way as well. I mean, and it's not the topic for today, but for AKP, things are not so promising either. I mean, they are also facing major challenges, especially because of the ongoing economic difficulties. I mean, perhaps the new economy administration, they are doing certain things. Uh, they're taking some right steps, but people will not really see the positive results in the short term. And even, I mean, the medium and long-term success, of course, is far from guaranteed. So that's why, despite all these challenges, actually, it's also difficult to declare the opposition defeat at this stage. I mean, the dynamics can still change, common sense can still prevail, and this is still Turkey. I mean, we are talking about a country, very dynamic country, things change very fast, so we should still be open to actually uh, surprises. So for that to happen, of course, party will need to think more pragmatically. Uh, but do you think it is possible at this stage, especially after statements coming from E-Party, uh, E-Party Chair uh, Meryl Akshenar, because she has been really very harsh against CHP. Will they be able to really come to the same table again and cooperate? Yeah, this is what I was going to say. I mean, I don't I don't think that would be possible, uh, Murat. I mean, yeah, this is Turkey, anything can happen, and that's politics, I understand that. But like, uh, after the elections, the party has been underlining no more coalition, no more coalition with CHP. They say in 81 cities of Turkey, we are going to run on our own. I kind of understand that position because CHP right now became politically toxic in a sense. You know, as I said, all these dirty under, under underwear, everybody's talking about each other, everybody within CHP revealing some inter-party secrets, what not, what happened in the former elections, who said what, who tried to, you know, protect their own position, um, you know, although the election was lost and this and that. So the, it, the CHP has become a very, very toxic now uh, in, in Turkish politics. So, I mean... Even parties came together for the local elections and say E party and CHP and they said, okay, we're going to again form a coalition to win Ankara and Istanbul again. I do not think voters will buy that. It's not going to be that easy because they have, especially Meryl Akshner, she's openly very, very cr cr critical mm -hmm. uh, of Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu and CHP, basically. You know, mm -hmm. she's really talking very openly. I mean, I don't think uh, parties can talk their waters into this uh, one more time. Even last time, you know, like this table of six, as I said, there were like smaller Islamist parties. Most of the CHP voters, they were really disturbed voting for uh, Islamist candidates because Islamist candidates and MP candidates, they ran from CHP lists, basically. Mm. So a staunch secular person from central Ankara had to vote for, I mean, I'm, I'm underlining, say, like central Ankara because that's a historically very, very secular neighborhood and like CHP is elected from that area, like with 100 percent, you know, and they had to like vote for a staunch Islamist figure uh, from a small Deva party because they were running from CHP lists, actually. Mm. They were furious. So basically, the, the opposition voters, they had to swallow a lot. You know, they had mm. to swallow their political pride in, in, in a sense, so to say. So, I mean, um, they, they paid a high price uh, in, in, in, in their own sense. So I don't I mean, you're going to ask voters, like, do that again? for the second time, why would they say yes to that? I don't think that's possible. I mean, that train has passed, that boat has sailed, whatever you call it. They had to come up with a new formula. So in any case, I think there has to be a change 
this way or that way in CHP. Uh, I mean, I don't think Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu. I mean, he's politically dead. Let's face it. Is he, mm-hmm. he he became this caricaturized figure who says one thing one day and another thing another day and like basically he's lost. Every interview he gave after the election turned out to be a disaster, you know, and he does not have that PR machine um, working for him anymore, like uh, before the election. So I don't I don't think that that's possible, but it it is highly likely that um, you know in the local elections. Literally, the opposition can lose Ankara and Istanbul, I think. I mean, it looks like that, if, unless we see like mm-hmm. a fundamental change within the pol- with the political dynamics in Turkey. I mean, I agree, but then, uh, I mean, for the table of six, that certainly is over, and I don't expect those small political parties to join any sort of alliance, and probably the party will never, ever accept that. We also see that they are not really influential, so why to bother with them anymore? But it also depends how we formulate it and what sort of leadership uh, we will have with the CHP and also who will be really playing that role of coordination because it doesn't have to be as some sort of like full-fledged uh, alliance, but uh, maybe limited to cooperation in certain cities as well. So. Formulation is important, and who will do this is also important. That's why I think uh, Imamol can still play a role, uh, because my election, I was also sort of indirectly criticizing him, but he's still in a position uh, that he's sort of in an equal distance to both sides, and he's also rather popular in many probably uh, people voting for uh, E-Party as well. And so there's still that sort of option that he can play that sort of moderation role in case, of course, of a political change within CHP as well. So it's going to be difficult, but it is still, I feel like, possible because they need to act pragmatically and they need to find a solution. And uh, his approach has always been constructive and such a figure probably needed to build a consensus as well. So. This is probably also a, a chance for him to continue as an influential political leader. I mean, uh, if he doesn't win Istanbul, uh, it will be also quite challenging for him in the future because let's agree on the fact that, I mean, of course, he wants to be re-elected for Istanbul mayor, but actually he is really looking to be the leader of the opposition and potentially the opposition candidate in the next presidential election. So. Of course, it's difficult to talk about this at this stage, but uh, we also don't see many names. I mean, uh, people, they want to see someone, they want some sort of hope, um, but we don't see many, uh, many names like this. So he still has this potential and the municipal election will, of course, test his leadership as well. He will have to coordinate a sort of multi-layered strategy, bringing together maybe different opposition parties, I mean, he, he needs to again play this sort of uh, balancing act as well, maybe with the CHP and E party, but in Istanbul, he will again need uh, Kurdish voters as well. So, but on the other hand, if he wins again, it will be his actually third victory in Istanbul, including the real election. So, it may also be rather big politically as well. So, it's not going to be an easy process, but I think if it's managed well, there is still hope but uh, it's not going to be easy. I mean, the only advantage, I believe, uh, the pol- it's also about the positive side of Turkey society. We recover quickly after crisis. I mean, recovering quickly, standing up, continuing the struggle and refining the hope and finding it again, that's still possible. Of course, that will depend on the developments in the next few months, but on the one hand, pessimism is widespread uh, especially mm-hmm. among, of course, the opposition voters, but we shouldn't be surprised to see a new wave of optimism either, because that's also how Turks operate, I guess. Yeah. Also, like talk of the town, of course, AK Parti is not just sitting and waiting for the local elections. Also, Erdogan, he wants to take Istanbul back. That's very important for him. This is where his political career started. Uh, so he wants to take Istanbul back. Istanbul is symbolic. Istanbul is important. It's talk of the town, like it's like all AK Parti, the local mayors of of smaller Istanbul districts, they all went around for Istanbul, of course. But one rumor, but that's only a rumor, like we, we don't know yet, of course, but uh, 
probably, I mean, Erdogan would want his younger son-in-law, uh, the inventor of Bayraktar drones, Selçuk Bayraktar, to run for Istanbul mm-hmm. as, a, as a mayor because he's popular with younger people. You know, that's how AK Parti loses. Younger people tend to vote for the opposition, basically. AK Parti is not strong among young people, but Selçuk Bayraktar is. He's like, he has this techno fest, like a festival of technology, basically. He is the inventor of that. He does that like every year. It started in Istanbul. Now they're in, they're doing this in other cities and whatnot. And he walks around in this techno fest like a little rock star, you know, um, Sajid Bayraktar. And he's, you know, now he's a more important figure after Russia-Ukraine war because Bayraktar drones have been really functional uh, in Ukraine's defense. So he's even more renowned uh, internationally. So they are saying Erdogan wants him to run and that'll be the start of his political career. And if he wins, of course, Mm -hmm. against Ekrem Imamoglu, that'll be huge. So this could be the, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, a surprise for municipal elections, but these are all rumors now. We don't know yet. I mean, this can also be a test for next presidential elections because we are talking about actually two candidates potentially who can be the ones running in the next presidential. But of course, yes. it would also be a very risky move because in case Bayraktar uses that would be also the end of his political career and we can really talk about a potential candidacy in the next presidentials probably. So let's see. It's always exactly. exciting, of course. We'll see. We'll see and talk about all those in Talk Turkey. See you in the next episode then. Bye.